All right, take two. We, we had to chop the video. But now we're getting into the South Florida Bulls. I am excited about this. Me too. All right. One of the teams I love in this, in this conference, definitely in this division. Now, I don't love them. I think they'll be a little better than last year. Okay. But I think a lot of that has to do with, uh, well, look, let's just let's go through the notes. Seven and six last year, three and five. Returning starters, they got nine on offense, six on defense. Number 32 in the country in experience returning, number two in the conference. So that's that's all good, right? Pretty big. Charlie Strong, 17 and eight in his first two seasons. They started 7 and 0 last year and then finished the year 0 and 6. That's tough. There was talent and a little bit of the injury bug, but not much. It was mostly because of, like, that team was just not disciplined towards the end of the season for whatever reason. Uh, quarterback Blake Barnett, key weapon for new offensive coordinator Kerwin Bell, who, for those that keep track of these things, if you have not heard of that name, uh, Division II national title winning Valdosta State head coach is now the OC at South Florida. Uh, that should show you the difference in uh, finances. That's right. right. Like South Florida's offensive coordinator makes that more much more money than a Division II national championship coach. Yeah, that's pretty yeah. crazy. Uh, number 95 scoring defense, number 104 total defense. New de- uh, defense coordinator Brian Jean Mary. He spent the last nine years under Strong as a linebackers coach. Uh, so Strong bringing in people that he's comfortable with that he knows to, to keep this thing going. Charlie Strong's defensive S&P plus rankings. All right. Now, this is pretty crazy. Uh, seven and six at Louisville in 2010, they were number 27 in defense. 2011, they were seven and six again, number 22 in defense. Then he goes 11 and two with the number 49 S&P plus efficiency defense. That's right. Number nine most efficient defense in 2013. That's when he went 12 and one. Then he goes to Texas. All right, six and seven with the number 12 defense. Then he's got uh, five and seven with the number 60 defense. Five and seven with the number 50 defense. That was 60, six zero. Yeah, six zero and then five zero the next year. Um, and then 10 and two his first season in South Florida with the number 29 defense and then number 80 with the uh, seven and six record last year. So his records are all over the place. Like his defense doesn't have to be good for them to win. That's right. In some cases, when the defense is good but the offense is bad, they can still be good, or sometimes they just suck, period. That's right. I don't know what to make of Charlie Strong. There is no identity, right? I've always defended him, and I don't know why, and the more I look at his resume, I just wonder, what am I defending? Yeah. And I don't know the answer to that, but I do like him. Like, I've wait, always liked him. Obviously, he's a high-character guy, right? That's right. Like, we, we believe that, but... But but when you have the mistakes you have at the end of the year last year that are discipline issues, and then we're not talking about discipline off the field, getting in trouble, no, it's but just, just like fumbling the football, offsides, like penalties that are that are all about... Correctable. Is your, yes. Is your team focused? Is your team playing, you know, with some pride and, and, and actually... Paying attention to the details, I I just I just like him. I think he's a really good coach, and I just feel I don't know like if the numbers I feel like Texas suggest that, but part of me just wants to blame <laughs> Texas because I don't like the school, and I just think. But with the they season broke like him. last season, it's like okay. Now a lot of it could have been that they were pretty young last year, right? It, That's so right. The year before they lost a ton of seniors. So, it, because you remember us talking before about if this, like, if you're going to jump, you better jump. That's right. But he didn't, and here we are. Now, they do get a lot of experience back this year. Uh, I've got them at 7-5 and five this year. Okay. Um, uh, losses, basically bookend losses. Like, two losses to start the year with Wisconsin and at Georgia Tech, and then a loss uh, at home to Cincinnati, uh, at home to Memphis, and then at UCF to close the season, and then winning everything else in between. So, I've got them 8-4. and four. And it wouldn't surprise me if they win the Georgia Tech game. I know that and, wouldn't surprise and, me at and, all. And just and I don't like the. There's nobody really on the schedule outside of Wisconsin, realistically. And I don't know that the way Wisconsin played last year that that's such a like they realistically could win all these games. Now, I'm not yeah. saying they're going to go undefeated. I got a mate in four, but but I don't think anybody is so head and shoulders better than them. If they bring their A game, and the other team is not ready, they can win all these games. Oh yeah, absolutely. And and so. I don't know. Like I said, they're one of my eight. I've got a lot of eight and four, nine and three, ten and two in this conference because it, 
and I don't think it's a negative on anybody in this conference. I just think they're going to knock each other off. I can believe that. All right, so that's going to wrap up the AAC East. Uh, go to winningcureseverything.com. We've got all the other previews up there. Go to betnow.eu. We will see you guys next time. Thanks for checking out Winning Cures Everything. If you want to keep up with us, hit subscribe on YouTube or your favorite podcast app. Visit the website at winningcureseverything.com or you can like us on Facebook or follow us at Winning Cures, at Gary WCE, or at Chris B. Giannini on Twitter. Share out the show, leave a nice review, and make sure to comment and tweet at us.